Hey Optimancers, Chris here. So, if you want to make your own optimized build and plan to multi-class to get the most out of the build you can, then this is the video for you. The first thing you need to know are the basic rules and basic things to know about multi-classing. And if you don't know those, you're likely going to end up with a mess. If you look up at the top right of your screen right now, I'm linking my video for multi-classing basics that go over those absolute must-know things before you start making these decisions. Assuming all that information is already stuffed into your brain, then let's go through the classes and look how to make the most out of each for multi-classing. There's two ways to multi-class any class. First one is that it's our base class. So we start in that class and then we multi-class out. The points where we want to consider leaving that class are called jump points. So we're going to go over those. The other way is multi-classing into a class. Sometimes we're outright changing the direction of our new character to this new class, but often we might just want to access some nifty features that we might get without too many levels. And in that case, we call that a class dip. A dip might be a single level or more than that, but to be a dip, that means the majority of your class level split needs to not be that class. Whenever I go over these options, I'm going to color code them. If I rank an option blue, it is a fantastic dip or a strong point to multi-class out of your class. Green, it's good. And orange, it might be good in very specific cases only. For example, it could require a specialized build or very specific subclasses, like maybe only one or two. If it's good for like three subclasses or more, then I think it's probably not that circumstantial, so it's probably good enough for a green rank. I won't be ranking bad options. There's just too many bad times to multi-class to list them all. Hi, if you enjoy this kind of content and you'd be interested in supporting it, you can find the link to my Patreon page in the video description. My patrons see these videos early and without the YouTube ads, and you get additional perks depending on your level of support, including an exclusive Discord community as well as a monthly video callout. Today I want to recognize these patrons. Airhead, Alex R, Rob Reichelt, Awesome Face, Ben Potts, Benjamin, Bloody Nine, Brett McDowell, Atherazone, CJ, Chris Coons, Unknown Watcher, Daniel Sturgeon, Dank Train, Dash Panther, Dave Peters, David Edgar, David Lotz, David W. Skibbins, and Dewey Cheatham and Howe. Thank you all so much for your support. Let's get started. We are going to start with the A's and Artificer. So the first and most common jump point for Artificer is level 1. Right after level 1 is a strong point for an Artificer to consider multiclassing into a full casting class. That's usually going to be the Wizard. They've picked up Medium Armor and Shields, and because Artificers round up spellcasting levels for multiclassing, you don't feel that sting from starting with a half-casting class. This is blue. This is probably the most common jump point for an Artificer, and it's usually going into Wizard just because they both use Intelligence in terms of their multiclassing requirements, so it's just kind of a natural fit. The next possible jump point would be Level 3. I'm almost hesitant to mention this one. In this case, we're really specifically talking about Artillerists. At this point, you're basically a temporary hit point machine, that's by far the best thing you can do. Beyond that, you're a half caster with a couple infusions. However, you might be better off with another class after level 3 because the Artillerist isn't offering a whole lot after this. It gets an orange rank. The next possible jump point is level 5. We're probably talking specifically about the Battlesmith here. You have extra attack and you're using Intelligence for your attacks. For a spell sword style character, or a gish if you prefer, this is not a bad way to go. Once again, you probably want to consider wizard as your next class, though this could also be a possibility for a jumping point into an arcane trickster. Orange rank because this really only applies to battlesmiths. If you're an armorer, it's rough to leave before that big level 9 subclass feature. If you are sticking with artificer past level 5, you may be in a low magic campaign. At which point, 10th level is a tempting jump point. You have stronger infused item options, and you can infuse 4 items, 6 if you're an armorer. In high magic games, this scaling is less dramatic. 
I'm giving it an orange rank because high magic in my experience is a lot more common than low magic for D&D. However, you know if you're in a low magic campaign, and if you are, I would be thinking about multiclassing right at 10. Though if you stick past level 10, I'd probably just stick with Artificer all the way. They get strong 18th level and 20th level features, so a 20th level Artificer can do just fine. On to dipping. So if we are going to dip Artificer later, Artificer might be a possible two level dip for some martial characters. This will generally be to access specific infusion options like Repeating Shot, which can be a really strong infusion for a hand crossbow character, allowing them to wear a shield without losing the ability to fire their weapon. Returning Weapon for specialized like dart throwing builds might also be your play. These are pretty specialized cases, so this gets an orange rank. Most multi-class builds that didn't start with Artificer probably aren't going to go back for it later. I suppose I'll give a tentative orange ranking to a 3 level dip as well. If you really need intelligence based weapon attacks or a temporary hit point cannon, this could be worth 3 levels but it is a pretty big dip for those kind of bonuses. I would think carefully about this one, often the 3 levels, they're just a really big investment for the benefits they provide. Next let's look at barbarians and when it comes to jump points, there is one that stands really really out and that is level 5. When we are talking classes with extra attack that are going to rely on using weapons, level 5 is that point, and we have to think if level 6 and beyond are giving us enough that it's actually worth staying with this class rather than switching to a new one. For barbarians, by 5th level we have 3 uses of rage, extra attack, fast movement, reckless attack, unarmored defense, danger sense, primal knowledge, and our level 3 subclass feature. That is a pretty heavy stacking of features in our first 5 levels. Level 5 becomes probably the best option for a Barbarian jump point, and I'm rating it blue. If you're a Barbarian who is going to multiclass, this is probably the time to do it. That said, there are some reasons in the next few levels that might make it tempting to stick around for a while at least. Level 6 is the next most obvious jump point. Rage uses do not scale quickly, so if they are important to you, at level 6 we go from 3 to 4 uses, and it will not scale again until level 12. Level 6 also gives us our second subclass feature, and if I'm investing 6 levels, I'm probably looking at Path of the Beast if I'm going to be using those natural attacks, because that's when they're considered magical attacks, which will be an absolute requirement. Berserkers give you the only really good feature they get with Mindless Rage, along a similar line, Wild Magic Barbarians get their only really good feature with Bolstering Magic. The other 6 level features for subclasses tend not to be standouts, or they're not going to scale as needed when we multiclass from Barbarian. Level 6 is not quite as optimal as level 5 overall though, but you know, probably worth a green rating for the options I just mentioned. The next jump point for Barbarians is level 8. Level 7 offers some nice things like advantage on initiative checks and moving half your speed when you rage, but it also involves you jumping right before an ability score increase that you're likely going to need. Making that one more level to get to level 8 is probably worth the investment. This one is iffy though. Two more levels is a fairly big investment. I'm giving it a green ranking, but this is a pale green. Our final jump point from Barbarian is level 14. This is very, very specific. Path of the Zealot at level 14 gets Rage Beyond Death, which is probably the most powerful feature that any Barbarian can get. That said, it is only for Path of the Zealot, and that trip, even for Path of the Zealot Barbarians, from level 8 to level 14, is a long and unrewarding one. This gets an orange ranking because Rage Beyond Death isn't just good, it's unique, and it's possible to optimize around this feature if you are playing a higher level one-shot or something. But this is very, very orange. Very specific build plans can make use of this, Otherwise, probably not worth the levels. Otherwise, Barbarian just doesn't offer a whole lot after level 8 for holding off your multiclassing. If you're planning to take your Barbarian past level 8, you might want to consider just sticking with Barbarian then, because level 20 does give a pretty solid capstone. But I just should warn you that between levels 8 and 20, there's just not a whole lot to the Barbarian. So now let's talk about dipping the Barbarian. First of all, if you're dipping Barbarian at all, 
there's probably two things you want to have in the first place. First, you want to have extra attack from your previous class. And second, you want a melee character that uses or can use strength-based attacks. In that case, it might be worth taking two levels in Barbarian, and that will be primarily for Reckless Attack. Reckless Attack is one of the easiest ways in the game to guarantee advantage on attacks, and it applies to all your attacks on your turn. There is the downside of granting advantage to enemies, but if you are focused on damage, Reckless Attack works exceptionally well if you have the Great Weapon Master feat, especially if combined with Polar Master. This affects enough characters that it ranks green as a two-level dip. The Bard is next, and if Bard is your starting class, you're almost certainly going to want at least five levels, so level five is our first jump point. Level three spells are a big deal, and in the case of Bards, this includes Dispel Magic, Fear, Hypnotic Pattern, Lehman's Tiny Hut, and Plant Growth. There's nothing between levels one and four of the Bard worth multiclassing out before access to these powerful spells becomes a reality. The second reason, and this is just as important, to hold off until level 5 is Font of Inspiration. This is going to allow you to recover your expended uses of Bardic Inspiration with a short rest. This can give you double, triple, or even more uses of your most iconic feature. The advancement to a D8 at level 5 is just icing on the cake. This is a blue option for multiclassing your Bard. However, depending on your subclass, it may be worth holding off until level 6. If weapon use is something you want to focus on, Valor and Swords Bards pick up extra attack at this level, which is vital if that's your focus. College of Lore is the other subclass where you might want to hold off until level 6, as Additional Magical Secrets allows access to two spells from any school up to level 3. Being that you're likely focused on spellcasting as a College of Lore Bard, this is the feature that really stands out for that subclass. Level 6 gets a green rating because those three particular subclasses have lots of reasons to hold off that one extra level. The next jump point would be level 10. This is when all bards get magical secrets, and there are certain spells your build may be really hungry for, and as long as their 5th level spells are lower, this is when you get access. Additionally, your bardic inspiration die increases to a d10. This is a pretty long stretch, so this one is orange. If the magical secret option you're looking at makes your build, then this is worth it. Otherwise, you might be better off multiclassing much earlier or much later. Speaking of much later, the last jump point for bards is level 18. And I know this is really late, but after our final magical secrets gives us spells like Wish and Mass Heal, we pretty much wrung out everything from the bard class we can. The capstone, it's not worth it. So unless you are specifically waiting for that ability score increase at 19, I just don't see sticking with Bard at this point. The only reason to continue in Bard is to be a completionist. What you really want to do is grab two levels of Fighter, and then with your final two levels, you get Action Surge, and that gives you a good capstone. Okay, so let's talk about dipping the Bard. Here's where Bards, they don't offer much. Not getting fun of inspiration really limits the best bard options before 5th level, and once we have 5 levels in bard, it's probably not really a dip anymore. There's some more minor things like getting the extra skill proficiency or jack of all trades, but it's likely if you want 2 levels in bard, you don't want to jump elsewhere. Clerics are next. Here we see another jump point right at level 1. The first level in cleric can offer you spell slot progression, armor and shield proficiency of medium or heavy, depending on your subclass, but you'll get at least medium armor and shields, and you'll get a subclass feature. Not all of them scale very well, but Arcana, Forge, Life, Order, Peace, and Twilight, and potentially War offer features that can make one level of investment worth it. So it gets a green rating. If you're going to go more than one level though, five levels is the gold standard. Spirit Guardian scales great and works really well with Cleric Multiclassing. We're also getting Channel Divinity and our subclass is going to give us a special option for that and there's many good choices. This is a blue jump point for sure. If you are going beyond level 5 then maybe it's level 6 you want to jump if you are a Peace or Twilight Cleric. Possibly Tempest for some very specific builds. There's some fairly good features for some other subclasses, such as Forge, Grave, and Order, but 
Overall, this doesn't have the same impact as fifth level. Still, for the right subclass, that extra level is worth a green rating. If you're passing six levels in Cleric, you might want to consider giving it the long haul for those ninth level spells and one of the better capstones in the game. As for dipping Cleric, first, Cleric is the only class where dipping one level can get you heavy armor proficiency, if the subclass provides it. That alone might be worth a dip. Life Cleric can be a very strong first level dip for Druids and Rangers. Order can be a strong dip for other spellcasting classes. Peace and Twilight are good dips for pretty much any class. Overall, a fairly strong one level dip for a green rating. Not sure I would go more than one level for dipping, except for two very specific circumstances, such as Twilight, if you don't have a method of getting temporary hit points, and perhaps War on some specific high damage builds, or Tempest on certain blaster builds. For the most part, if you want two levels, you probably want five. Next is the Druid, which might be one of the least attractive classes for multiclassing. The armor restrictions, they don't go away if you multiclass for one thing, and if you're the iconic Moon Druid, then the capstone is something you don't want to give up, if 20th level is even a remote possibility. That said, there are a few cases where multiclassing can work out well. The first jump point is second level, and this is specifically for a Moon Druid. Wild Shape on a second level Moon Druid is very powerful, but does not scale well with your Druid levels, in either uses or in the forms you can take. This can make multiclassing into classes like Barbarian or Monk seem pretty attractive. This gets a moderate orange ranking because these kinds of builds tend to do fine at the lower levels, but eventually Wild Shape it's just not paying off, and then the builds fall flat. So for a low level game, it can work well, for a higher level game, it really doesn't. The next possible jump point is level 5. This is when the druid gets the very powerful Conjure Animal spell. This is a spell that scales well with spell slot level, so if you multiclass into another casting class, you can still make fairly good use of this spell. Though monster resistances and immunities, as well as greater sizes that reduce control options like grappling or even blocking, come more and more into play as you advance in levels. Still, this is a strong enough jump point for a green rating. It's at least worth considering a one level dip in another class to pick up spells like Shield and then go back into Druid. Level 6 is actually a pretty solid jump point for the Shepherd Druid specifically. Again, multiclassing into another spellcaster will generally be the play here to have the option to scale your conjure animals. Since Shepherd Druids gain a feature at level 6 that makes the conjured animals' attacks magical, this tends to work a lot better at higher levels, at least against creatures without area of effect options, or those ones that punish every melee attacker with damage. But this one is good enough to mention, so it's going to get an orange rank. Otherwise, level 17 is probably the jump point where every druid that isn't a moon druid wants to consider. Wild Shape just isn't a good combat option, it's really just utility for other druids and the 18 plus level features really center around making moon druids better, not the other subclasses. So this gets a green rank. For dipping, druids, they're just not great. I'll give honorable mention for a one level dip for a life cleric for life berries, and that's about it. Okay, on to fighters. It's pretty common for fighters to multiclass because they have several good jump points. The first is that single level dip. For a spellcaster, that means full armor proficiencies, a fighting style, a constitution saving throw proficiency, and that's not bad at all. So this gets a green rank. The second is fifth level. You get action surge, your subclass, the all important extra attack. This is a tempting level for multiclassing. However, sixth, seventh, and eighth level offer some good options. So this gets green. The third is 6th level. One more level picks up that fighter bonus ability score increase, which is often worth the extra level. This also gets green. If you go past 6th, then you probably want to hold off for 8th level, where you not only pick up a subclass feature at level 7, but also the additional feat. This is only for subclasses that are giving you a banger feature at level 7. Right away, Echo Knights and Rune Knights come to mind. Orange rank because 
most fighters level classes give pretty middle of the road features at level 7. However, if you invest 8 levels, it is really tempting to hold off until 11th level. That's when fighter gets improved extra attack, allowing two additional attacks. This is a feature unique to fighters, and if you use a weapon, it's pretty dramatic, especially combined with action surge. After level 11, fighters really aren't offering much for several levels. So if you invest those 11 levels, then I would really consider checking out New Horizons at this point, regardless of your subclass, blue rank. As for dipping, if you're a dipping fighter, you're looking at Action Surge. Action Surge is really impactful on any class mix in the game, whether you use weapons or cast spells. That ability to get an extra action, even once per short rest, makes a big difference. Two levels of fighter scores green as a fairly good dip on many different builds. Okay, so next is the Monk. Now, if you are optimizing, I would caution against playing monks in the first place unless you are used to very short adventuring days, in which case the problem with limited key becomes a lot less severe. That said, level 5 is definitely a possibility. Extra attack is still extra attack. You've also got stunning strike and key focused aim, so this scores a green rating. Holding off until level 6 is a decent possibility for certain subclasses. Most monk subclasses offer honestly pretty lousy 6 level features, but Mercy, Shadow, and Long Death are the exceptions to that rule. For those subclasses, one more level could pay off, so this gets a pale green. Beyond that, if you're sticking with monk past 6, you might as well stick it out for the best feature. But you'll be waiting until level 14. Diamond Soul is probably the best feature a monk gets, they get it late, but if you're playing a monk, level 14 will be one level where the gains are dramatic. I mean, unless you're an astral self monk, this is definitely the last jump point. There's just not much left to grab from this class, green rank. Now, if you are looking to dip a class, I wouldn't look all that hard at monks. Maybe one level for moon druids, again, just for low level games. Unarmored defense can give you a decent armor class, well wild shaped. And really, that's about it. I'll be generous and give it an orange ranking. Moving on to Paladins, they are one of the stronger classes in the game. This is largely due to the power of their 6 level feature, which doesn't just give your character significant saving throw increases, it shares them with the allies around you. This is the one extra attack class where you never want to jump at level 5. Hang in for one more level and get Aura of Protection. At this point, it is extremely tempting for Paladins to multi-class, often to a full spellcasting class. This gets a solid blue. The next consideration is level 8. There's a couple strong 7th level aura improvements, Watchers for sure, but Devotions and Ancients are also pretty strong. However, if you're going 7, it's worth one more level. Remember, Paladins round down for spellcasting when multiclassing, so that 8th level is giving you a full level of spellcasting progression with that multiclass, and you also pick up an ability score bonus. This ranks green. Worth it for a few Paladin subclasses, but not all of them. If you decide to go straight Paladin past level 8, then I would just stay Paladin. They get a very strong 18th level feature, and their capstone is based on your subclass, but they're all pretty good. So if we're talking about dipping, the two-level dip in Paladin is often brought up in the case of spellcasters who use a melee weapon as a way to access smite and do some extra damage. In my experience, the spells you could cast with those slots are generally not much worse than smiting, and they're often better. And the multi-class strength requirement for Paladins make them not an easy multi-class for most spellcasters. I'll give this an orange rank because it is certainly tempting for a blade pack warlock or a swords or valor bard, but in most cases, I think this is an overrated dip. On to rangers. Okay, so once again, with extra attack classes, you probably want to wait until at least level 5. And for rangers, this tends to be a strong jump point because in addition to extra attack, you picked up second level spells. Plus, you have some fairly strong features. Assuming you're using the Atasha's optional class features, I generally recommend taking all the options available there, and you get a third level subclass feature. 
The standout, of course, is the Gloomstalker, which is almost certainly the most powerful ranger, but generally, regardless of subclass, you probably want to consider the possibility of multiclassing at level 5. This is a blue rank. The next tempting jump point is level 9. Now your ranger has Conjure Animals and a 7th level subclass feature. Whether 9 levels is worth the 4 extra levels really depends on that 7th level feature. Remember, you could also get Conjure Animals with 5 levels of Druid by itself. Again, Gloomstalkers get a nice 7th level feature, as do Fey Wanderers. So we'll give this one an orange rank. If you are going past level 9, then I would definitely consider multiclassing at least by level 17. Rangers have an infamously lousy capstone, and Feral Senses isn't worth holding off till 18. You can probably do better with those final 3 levels. And this gets a green rank. Okay, so for dipping, one or two levels normally isn't worthwhile, meaning you probably want three. And if you want three levels in Ranger, it's because you are grabbing Gloomstalker. This is a common three level dip for weapon users and a pretty strong one, very specifically for that subclass though, so that's why it is an orange rank. On to the rogue. Okay, so the rogue's a tough one because sneak attack has a linear progression, meaning there's no optimal stage past first level to multi-class out. However, I would consider jumping from rogue at level one. Honestly, a first level rogue has the d6 sneak attack, four starting skill proficiencies, expertise. That's not bad for a one level investment. If you do go into a class with extra attack, you're still going to get it at level 6, though level 5 will hurt, but this gets a green rank. The other possible jump point is level 10. That's when the rogue gets that bonus ability score improvement, and they picked up their ninth level subclass feature. If you are a phantom, arcane trickster, or soul knife, you probably got a pretty good ninth level ability, and this is a good time to consider moving out. This ranks green. If you do stick straight rogue, at least consider a multi-class at level 17. The next three levels give you a d6 sneak attack, a lackluster elusive feature, an ability score improvement, and a pretty lousy capstone. So this gets a green rank. So, dipping rogue. If you're going to dip a rogue, there's only really one reason I would do it, and that is if I want cunning action. So if you need something effective to do with your bonus action, maybe you're base class didn't give you any good bonus actions and you don't have any feats that are giving you good bonus actions, cunning action is a good feature that does not have uses. So you can just use it over and over again. So dipping two levels of rogue isn't bad on some builds. It's very specific though. Uh, so I'm going to give it an orange rank. Moving on to the sorcerer. All right, so with the Sorcerer, jumping after level 1 can be pretty attractive, especially for a focused spellcaster. You get the shield spell, and you get a constitution saving throw proficiency and subclass feature. Divine Soul is the standard, as favored by the gods, is a feature that remains pretty good regardless of your level. It's a green rank. Otherwise, you probably want to stick with Sorcerer until level 5. Sorcerers have some very strong third level spell options, such as Counterspell, Fear, Hypnotic Pattern, and you've picked up Meta Magic and Font of Magic, which allow you to replenish sorcery points by expending spell slots, which you can continue to grow by multiclassing with another spellcaster. This is a blue rank, regardless of subclass. The last jump point I consider for sorcerers is level 18. You've got all your subclass features, you've got the Wish spell, and Sorcerer it's just not going to give you much more. The capstone isn't awful, but it's definitely so-so. This score is green. For dipping Sorcerer, there's really two options. A single level dip will basically get you spells, including the shield spell, and favored by the gods, assuming you go Divine Soul. But unless this is going to keep you from a needed heavy armor proficiency, you might want to consider taking this as your first level, rather than as a dip later but it gets orange for sometimes being worthwhile. Otherwise, a two-level dip in Sorcerer is a possibility for spellcasters, perhaps three. This is a big dip, but the Metamagic Adept feat does not give you the ability to sacrifice spell slots for more sorcery points. For that, you need Font of Magic, and that requires two levels of Sorcerer. 
And if you want metamagic and you don't have the feat, then you need three levels of sorcerer. For most spellcasters, you don't want to be dipping three levels in another class, but there is an exception to that. After you reach 17th level, because Fawn of Magic and Metamagic exceed a lot of caster capstones. This is also orange. Okay, the Warlock, which is probably the king of multiclassing. An optimized multiclass build probably has levels of Warlock more commonly than any other class in the game. Let's start with level 1. So, you're starting Hexblade if this is your jump point. You use your one-handed weapon with Charisma, Medium Armor and Shield Proficiency, Hexblade's Curse, which scales with your level, and the Shield Spell. This is a super strong one level dip. It's also super specific to one subclass, which is why it gets an orange rank, but it is a common orange. Then the big jump point, level two. So now you might be any kind of warlock, but level two is a strong point to leave. Agonizing Blast and Repelling Blast are gonna make your Eldritch Blast attacks relevant for 20 levels. And you can pretty much play with multiclassing however you like from now on and stay relevant. Your pack slots also double to two slots per short rest. This is definitely a blue rank. Then level five. So now you have third level pack slots allowing casting of Counterspell, Fear, Hypnotic Pattern, and you picked up your third invocation, which perhaps will enhance your pack boon selected at the third level, or perhaps to enhance your Eldritch Blast further with something like Lance of Lethargy or Grasp of Vidar. This is definitely time to consider a multi-class. Warlock pack slots do not increase in uses for another six levels, and most straight warlocks eventually find invocations providing diminishing returns as they switch from being invocation hungry to what the heck should I take? This gets blue as well. If you are sticking with Warlock past 5, I would recommend you just stick it out. Level 11 is going to be a turning point, where you start piling Mystic Arcanum on top of increased pack slots, and you become a lot less spell slot hungry. Still, even if you do that, there's just very little reason to stick with Warlock after 17th level. You have all your subclass features, that 8th invocation is just not valuable at all, and you have the maximum amount of pack slots. And the capstone for Warlock isn't very good. This is a blue rank. Okay, and dipping. So Warlock is the ultimate dip class. One level for Hexblade or Undead Warlock, depending on whether you want armor, Hexblade, and charisma-based weaponry, or Undead if you want to have repeatable fear. In either case, this is an orange rank because we're talking two subclasses. If we're going to get two levels, that is the gold standard. Eldritch Blast, Repelling Blast, Agonizing Blast. This is a fantastic two-level dip on Sorcerers, Bards, and Paladins. Blue rank. And we're on to Wizards. So let's talk level 5. Yes, Wizards get Counterspell. Hypnotic Pattern, Fear, plus all the Rituals, and likely of their two second level subclass features, at least one of them is pretty good, and maybe both of them. However, keep in mind that Wizards also have superior high level spell options to every other caster, which actually makes multiclassing out, unless you're just going for a dip elsewhere, pretty unappealing. So I'm going to give this a green rank, but just barely. So instead, let's talk 17 levels. Now, you have the best spell list in the game, right up to 9th level spells. But now, 18th level, you get Spell Mastery, which is decent, but it's not amazing. And you get Signature Spells, which is a pretty big letdown after gaining 9th level spells at 17. So multiclassing into another spellcaster is pretty tempting to get that extra 6th and 7th level slots, but... As an intelligence-based caster, there's a fair chance you didn't want to carry a 13 Charisma or even Wisdom for 17 levels. So here's what you probably want to consider. Fighter 2 for Action Surge. That's probably worth a consideration, and you probably have the 13 Dexterity to qualify. So I, I would say that's worth it. Green rank. Now let's talk about Dipping Wizards. The 2-level Wizard Dip is the gold standard. You get the shield spell, absorb elements, find familiar, the other rituals, cantrips, 
often Booming Blade or Green Flame Blade are accessed here, and you get two subclass features, and some of them are really great. Bladesinger on a Rogue, for example. War Wizard on pretty much anything. Evoker, if you use area of effect spells. Divination for Portent. Chronergy is the War Wizard alternative, though it's a little less attractive for the two level dip, in my opinion. But those are the subclasses you probably want to look at. And that is the class by class multiclassing breakdown. If I missed any good jump points for these classes, be sure to let everyone know in the comments below. Otherwise, until the next time, I am going to sit back, relax, and have some fun. D&D is for everyone. Thanks, everybody, and I'll talk to you soon.